my goal today is to get you an overview of the lab, what we do in Barcelona, and what a better slide to start with, with the actual people who do the work in my lab. I'm not going to introduce them individually, but I want to, you to get an idea if you are planning to join our lab in the future. And, and this is one of the goals today, to identify good candidates to uh, join this team. You should know that the, the team is composed right now by 10 people, but it's growing as we speak. Um, I have to gender balance my lab. We have a lot of uh, ladies, uh, which is quite as special for a bioinformatics lab, but that, that has happened which I'm very glad it happens, but I still have to gender balance. What I don't have to balance is the proportion of postdocs and PhD students about half-half. So I think we have a very good equilibrium and, and we have a lot of different expertises from physics, math, biology mostly. And sometimes uh, we also get chemists, even at some point we had an architect in the lab some years ago uh, when we talked about genome architecture, we, we hire an architect actually. Um, we are mostly funded by uh, international grants, but also local grants. Now, historically, the lab has been working. We, we are defining ourselves a structural biologist. So we determine the structures of biomolecules. And lately, we have started looking at how the tissues organize. And obviously, 3D omics uh, ends in that end of the work. We have not yet published anything in this tissue re, uh, reconstruction because the, the two grants that we got, they, they are very young. The, one of them is about eight months old, is to reconstruct tumors and that's represented here. Uh, and the other one that we have is the one that we're discussing here through the omics, which is for material organization in the gut. But mostly we started many years ago when I was a young, PhD student and, and postdoc, uh, we, we, we have developed uh, methods for reconstructing three-dimensional structures of proteins based on homology um, approaches and also small ligands. Then we also worked on RNA uh, molecules. But for the last about 10, 15 years, we've been working very heavily on reconstructing three-dimensional genomes based on sequencing data. And that is what our lab is mostly known nowadays. On this field. Hopefully in the future it will also be known by reconstructing tissue based on omics data. But the point I want to bring is, is that we might not be experts in, in very much experts in each one of these fields, but what we are experts is what is represented in that slide, which is the mathematical foundations behind trying to reconstruct all, this, all these different biomolecular objects. What well, we've worked is in this, in this F here, which is not as simple as it looks, but uh, what we try to do is always try to understand how experiments are performed over a particular object. In the case of 3D omics, the cats, the cat of uh, the farm animals. Also all the analysis can be, that can be done based on omics data sets and, and computation based on those omics data sets. And we have uh, an entire work package for this in, in the project. We also look carefully at the physics. However, here is going to be much more complex uh, than in doing proteins or RNAs because the physics of the objects, so they interact and the physical forces attracting them are not trivial to understand, but also evolution. And we have tons of uh, people working in evolution in this network. Uh, evolution is very important to understand the relationships. So the point is that any of these observations that you do can be a mathematically formulate into as functions that relate the position of two points in the space. And in this case here, each one of these points is one bacteria in the gut and obviously other cells in, in the tissue of the animal. But we will have to spend uh, probably the next couple of years trying to understand what that F is for each one of the experiments that we perform in the network, the computations, physics of the object and the evolution of the animals. With the goal that at the very end, we will have a three-dimensional reconstruction of the cat, where then we can start visualizing in 3D all the other omics data sets that we have uh, obtained from the same samples. And that is the goal of my group 
in within the network is to try to figure it out this. So we, we're looking for two different type of profiles, both of them computational, uh, but one of them is mostly a genomic data integration and three-dimensional modeling. So what we're looking really is somebody that has been working before in, in microbiomes and omics of microbiomes in general and understands the keywords and the benefits of all the data coming out, omics data from proteomics to uh, genomics and, and, and transcriptomics. Because we can provide very easily to this fellow, we can provide it aspects of three-dimensional reconstruction, but we hope that the fellow will help us to uh, navigate these uh, data sets that we are not that familiar with. Um, then we also need a second postdoctoral fellow, but that one will be mostly focused on probably a more computational person, programmer, focus on how we are we going to visualize all this wealth of data so that we can transmit information easy across the network and information that can then be interpreted in a proper way to subtract the maximum biology from, from the actual three-dimensional object that you that the other fellow would build here. So these are the two types of fellows that we're looking for within the network. And I'm super happy to hear anybody that might be interested on in these two positions. Now, where are we within the entire picture? that Anton has introduced very nicely. And this is one of the figures we had in the, in the proposal. So we are really somewhere around here, these this steps here. Uh, so obviously we are not collecting the samples. We might be very much in close touch with the slicing and micro part of the network because the way that we will analyze the data, we need to understand how the data was obtained and this is part of obtaining the data. But at the same time, we might inform what is the best procedure here to obtain the best three-dimensional models at the end of the process? Obviously, there are plenty of groups in the network that do a beautiful omics profiling, but we also need to talk to them very carefully what type of uh, integration it will be done so that the three-dimensional models are the best and the most informative as possible. Sometimes data are um, very exclusive of one layer, but some of the times they are shared between layers and we have to understand this to do the best reconstruction. And finally, this will be later on analyzed and further um, studied. So we are we are in this in this somewhere in this area of the entire pipeline of the network three dimensional three D omics network. So this is the last slide. Just remember that if you join our lab, you will be joining this bunch of guys, which are great people. And at the same time, you would be in Barcelona. We have two localizations, one of them, uh, what we call our beach house, which is the CRG. It's in front of the beach, very nice. And the other one is our mountain house. It's next to the Tibidabo area and Football Club Barcelona Stadium, uh, which is also interesting for those of you who like football. Uh, and that's the Senac. And we belong to both institutions and we spend time in both institutions during the week. So thank you very much. For your attention and if you have any question or you want to talk to me directly you can email me or later on that we have questions and answers.